I needed to be able to make an app where I could update, record updates to one table, like this table, in a separate table where I have like the history of the updates that are made. So the convention here is kind of silly, but imagine you've got a bunch of people and you need to record their favorite fruit and whether or not their favorite fruit ever changed. So in this case, Bob's favorite fruit is banana and it has changed. So this is basically an example of what we're gonna be building. So let's say I'm gonna change John's favorite fruit um, I can go in here into the updates table, add a form entry, John, and let's say his favorite fruit is now kiwi. Hit save and come back to the main table and you can see that John, his favorite fruit is kiwi now and it changed. And here's a record of the change in the updates table. I could provide more information here about like, you know, when it changed, stuff like that, but that's not important for now. So how do we do this? How do we build this whole thing? I'm gonna show you from scratch. So imagine I've got a new spreadsheet and my instructions are up here on the left. If you wanna read them, you're welcome to as well. Um, what I'm gonna do is walk through it step by step. So I'm gonna create a new sheet that has a people table in it with name, favorite, favorite, if I could type, fruit, and whether or not it changed. So I'm gonna name that sheet people and I'm gonna create another sheet called updates. And in updates, I'm gonna have unique ID. This is gonna help for when we create the app, um, name and favorite fruit. I'm gonna name this sheet, mm, let's call this one Connecticut. It's a fun name, fun word. And I'm gonna have, let's see, nothing in the updates table, but in this table, let's get some people. Let's get Bob, let's get John, let's get Susan, and let's get Sally. Okay, and Bob's favorite fruit is mm, apple. John's is orange. Susan likes pineapple, and Sally likes mango. And none of these have changed. Let's say no. Actually, let's make one of them change. So no, no. No, but Sally has changed recently. Let's just pretend this will help us with the formatting rules. Okay, so we've got our table all set up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go extensions, app sheet, create an app. And while that is getting created, I'm gonna think about what I gotta do next, which is the first thing that I've gotta do is make sure that my tables are all set up right. So I'm gonna customize your app. And if I go into the people, I want in the people um, table, the name to be the key value. The key value is the thing that has to be unique. Um, so I'm not going to create any new entries with the same name, let's say. Uh, so that's the, how I want that one to be, but I haven't added the other table. So I got to add the other table, updates table, add this table. And for updates, I want to make sure that unique ID is the key, which it is, and it has an initial value of unique ID. This means that anytime I enter something new in here, it'll create a new unique ID a new entry in the updates table. I also need to make a view for the updates table. Oh, it looks like it's there, so, which is interesting. It's not quite showing up yet here. So I'm gonna refresh the page, see if it does show up. Lo and behold, it does, look at that. So now I have my two tables in here. I wanna do some just nice things that help me differentiate these two. I'm gonna change their icons, so I'm on the updates table and I'm gonna change this to like a checklist. Uh, which one do I want? I like this one. Okay. And then I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna to go to the people table. And I'm actually gonna make this an apple image, I think. So I'm gonna go fruit and choose that apple. So here's our fruit and people table and our updates table. Okay, so far so good. One thing I'm gonna do is set up before the whole thing starts. If I look at my people table right now, actually, let's change this to a table. It's a little easier to see the values. Okay, I can see here that, you know, what we've set up the table in such that, you know, most of the users haven't changed their favorite fruit, but one of them has. And I want for when the values are updated here for this yes to be in a different color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into format rules, add format rule, I'm gonna skip the suggestions. And for the people table, if the changed column equals yes, then we wanna do something. What we wanna do is make sure that's selected. 
we want to change the text and um, the mm, icon. Let's call this hand. I like this allergy one. Um, to yes now, but there's a problem. I'm not sure why this is doing this. Let's call this new um, format rule instead of new format rule. Let's call it changed. Changed rule. How about that? Okay, let's hit save. And you'll notice that was kind of wonky beforehand. They were all green, and I was like, hmm, is this not going to work? But when I saved, and sometimes refresh makes it so that this actually works. So now the one that is indicating changed is. Um, is showing up in a nice different format rule. Okay, so now how do we do the table part? How do we make one table, changes to one table, uh, or entries in one table, update another one? And basically what we needed to do is we need to create a, a few actions. So we're gonna create an action in the people table. We're gonna call it, I'm gonna skip the suggestion, we're gonna call this action A. We just need a word in here, just need a phrase that we can differentiate one from the other. And we're going to set some of the value, set the values of some columns in this row. And what we're going to do is change should be yes. Cool. We're also going to do one other thing in here. Are we um, yes. We're going to add another column because we actually also want to look up what that new favorite fruit is, right? So for favorite fruit, I'm going to copy this formula and paste it in here. It's got an extra space, which I don't need. I'm just going to take that out. And what that's going to do is say, look for the favorite. Well, yeah, that's the right. I got to fix that. There we go. Um, look for the favorite fruit of a person with a certain name um, in the updates table. Uh, and then I don't really know what this row does, but this actually makes the thing work. So like, I think this is um, saying edit this particular row in the people. Uh, table. So let's say this row being the one that you have selected for a given person. So, and I'm going to save this. That's probably not the best explanation of what that function does or, you know, that expression does. I don't really understand these things that great and I'm just learning them myself. So, but hopefully you can figure that out. You can definitely look up the, read the documentation on lookup and that'll explain more what this is doing. Um, okay. So then I'm going to create another action skip the suggestion. I'm going to call this action B and I want this one to operate on the updates table and instead of setting some values I want to execute an action on a set of rows. I want to execute that action on a set of rows in the people table so I choose the reference table to be people and then for reference rows I'm going to copy in this which will let us um, this is basically like a way to grab the person, right? To get a hold of the person and say, this is the person whose favorite fruit I want to change, right? So this formula basically says, find the values of the name column in the people table that are equal to the value specified for the name column when this form is submitted. So this makes it so that if you want to edit the Bob column in people, you have to select the Bob column in the entry form for updates when you go to create a new entry. This is the handle by which to grab the correct row. So let's hit save and then save again, save the entire app. And, oh, we got an action. Oh, that's right, okay. Um, what was that error again? Action on a set of rows for reference table people could not be found. Action. Let's try this again, save, save. Oh, I see what we did. We forgot to set the reference action. Action A, duh. Okay, save. Boom, now we have two actions. Okay. Um, the last thing that we need to do is make sure that the form view of the updates table executes our action. So in behavior, of the updates form view, instead of um, auto assign, we want to choose action B. And in fact, when we're finished the view, let's go to the people table instead of the updates table. So let's hit save. And at this point, this should work. So let's take, let's look at our table for a second and see who do we got. We got Bob and his favorite fruit is apple. Let's change Bob's favorite fruit to banana. So if I go Bob, 
your favorite fruit is now banana, and hit save, I should see in the table, yes, that Bob's favorite fruit has changed from whatever it was before, apple, to banana. Also, I get a list of history in here, which isn't that beautiful right now, so let's just change something a little bit and say in the updates table that we want the, we don't need the unique ID, let's get his favorite fruit in there. Hit save, yeah, so now we can see that that updates creates an entry in here so that we can see that Bob's favorite fruit is banana. That's one change that has happened. Um, and if we go in and go into the updates form again, let's change, let's see, let's change Susan's favorite fruit. And let's change, change it to mango. Susan, mango, save, boom. You can see that um, her favorite fruit has been updated in the uh, table and we have an entry for that update in the updates table. That's it, hope you find this helpful.